Good morning, guys. It's Ian from E2A, Educate to Accumulate. It is uh, Wednesday, the 9th of Feb, 2022. It's quarter to 10 in the morning in the UK. I want to run through uh, current trades. I want to run through uh, the trades that have been closed this morning. I also want to highlight um, New Zealand against the, uh, the US dollar. Uh, for a potential setup. It's not a strong signal. None of the signals have been particularly strong uh, this week, uh, but and the returns have been quite decent. Uh, in fact, uh, we've had a return rate of 2.5 uh, on uh, the trade since last Thursday. So let's have a look at the charts. Let's go to the, let's go to closed trades and, and, and trades uh, that we're still in. So Euro Sterling, uh, lucky enough to get short up here. Uh, I've just taken some profit. The only reason I don't particularly like this price action, I still want to be short. I still think that we get a move down to around about 83.07. Uh, but I'm looking at the single currency chart, the euro. It's starting to move higher. And what I don't like is the fact that although we did get a move lower yesterday, a sort of continued move lower, um, we've had, um, I think it's the Bank of France uh, governor saying, you know, shouldn't read too much into this uh, Euro hawkish stance and we're not going to raise rates and blah, blah, blah. Normally, when you get um, something like that, it, it has a tendency to knee jerk in the other direction. And we are seeing a move higher in Euro this morning. Um, when I go to my Euro charts, and this is what I want to talk about, um, these are my resistance levels. You can see this move up yesterday. And then this move to the downside and it didn't make this resistance level. So sometimes what happens then is that we do insist on getting there. And I think more likely we're going to see this channel. So I'd, I'd, I'd look to sell euros again, uh, but up up towards these sort of levels. So that's the reasons, uh, the reason uh, why I am out of euro against sterling uh, at the moment. So I'll take that one off the board. Um, I'm also uh, taking taking profit in Euro New Zealand. This is on back of two factors. We've got a 161.8% extension level here. Uh, we've got New Zealand uh, as a single currency just hitting uh, resistance. Uh, and also we've got that Euro view. So I am still want to be short, but I think there's a potential uh, to get um, short at higher levels at least today. Um, Euro Yen. I'm sticking with it. Um, this is really on the back of uh, yen now, uh, not on the back of euro. And I'm looking for uh, this move to the downside. Uh, that's a daily chart or even potentially uh, this move uh, to the downside, which is the weekly chart. So some quite aggressive moves, especially if this one plays out towards 116.70. Uh, Aussie New Zealand. Um, Short from yesterday on the back of Aussie hitting some resistance, uh, some positive news, I believe, overnight and sent it higher again, uh, as we can see here in this lift from 10 o'clock yesterday. Uh, but I've gone back in on uh, Aussie New Zealand on the back of this 261.8% extension. I've also had Aussie hit uh, resistance again this morning. So we put this into the Telegram channel uh, that I was looking to get short again. So this is my average price. So I'm just about getting back on side uh, with regards to Aussie New Zealand. I've got five units on there uh, with an average price of 107.47. So as it says on the tin, um, what I do like about here, this setup is this potential target all the way down here. Uh, so quite happy to sort of fade in with a tight stop because if it takes out the swing high, then I'm buggered anyway. Um, let's get that script off. Uh, Swiss Yen. And again, keep on getting these spikes, these nervy spikes to the upside. Uh, I'm basically two scenarios here. This wedge breakout on the weekly chart offers a medium term negative bias. We can sort of see uh, retests and then this uh, move up towards the swing high offering quite a decent uh, short entry for a move down towards here, which is 123.70. What didn't I cover? CAD yen. CAD yen, um, the reason I've taken that off is because I took partial profit this morning when CAD uh, hit and you can see that line there. That's where I took uh, partial profit, uh, but this is my average open. And you can see that we're still coming to the downside. So I don't mind banking profits um, and I like to leave uh, someone to bleed. And if we go to which chart? 
this chart. <laughs> if we go to this chart here, we've got two possible possible scenarios to the downside. We've got a butterfly formation here. We've got a crab formation here. So all um, sort of running in the directions, I suppose, that I want them to. Um, bank two this morning. I've got four on. One's on side. Three are offside. Only only swish ends offside tiny uh, but they are starting to move in the direction that we're looking at so let's go back to single currencies so this is what I'm expecting to happen in the euro so I want to be selling euro rallies the dollar we took, spoke about the dollar this morning in the room um, it's quite a mixed picture if you like if we go to this chart here uh, there's the potential uh, for a move lower uh, towards this 88.6 um, this is why I'm looking at New Zealand dollar against the US dollar because this is the only sort of cross currency pair uh, with regards to the dollar that offers a substantial um, setup and I've got these two support levels here so these are my bespoke support levels and why are they highlighted well if I go to this chart they're on a 61.8 percent fib so even if we break that 88.6 then this is the next barrier. So it's a limited barrier and it's a bit like the barrier that we had on yen. We had an initial barrier that got broken or we had initial support that got broken. It then just went down to the next support and then bounced to the upside. And that's why we're seeing the yen pairs now come back on side. Um, I'm going to use a tool here. This is a sim pattern. So just to highlight what could potentially happen is this. So that could potentially happen which offers support here, or this could potentially happen, which offers support here. So we've got a barrage or a range of support in the dollar, uh, which uh, we will then use to um, try and take the pair uh, back up, basically. Uh, so that's the dollar, that's the euro. Uh, sterling uh, is in no man's land. Uh, we bounced off a bit of support, but it wasn't particularly uh, perfect. So not really concentrating on that. Um, Swiss, two scenarios as we said yesterday, the four hour chart offers a downward scenario, the um, one hour chart offers an upward scenario, hence uh, being short on uh, Swiss yen, uh, which is now on side. Uh, CAD, uh, this is the black line, so we can see here, just bounce off that, uh, that support line uh, this morning. This is a big resistance level to the upside if we ever get there. Um, we could be forming this pattern. So again, it's a mixture and I'm not really trading the CAD. And that's why I got out of one of the units in, in, in CAD Yen, uh, because you can see this volatility. Um, should I be playing this or should I be playing this? Um, that's basically the question. Um, Aussie trying to break through, but nice resistance in Aussie. And that's the reason that I've got an Aussie New Zealand short, but also this New Zealand could, um, potentially become a hedge uh, so New Zealand dollar uh, hitting resistance here and yen uh, which we've been talking about this was the support level and yen on the uh, eight hour chart and this is what I'm expecting to unwind today so basically a bit of a five wave up to the resistance level some pro choppy price action um, what can we say about that? That's about it, really. Uh, and that is why I'm obviously buying yen. And that should mean risk off for uh, stock indices. I know that we've seen uh, some choppy and volatile trading in indices first thing this morning. Uh, but as far as this is concerned, I think you've got to leave a bit of room uh, with regards to sort of short or long positions and have a decent sort of stop loss policy but give them room to breathe just in case we do get this whipshaw uh, price action. So that sort of brings me on to New Zealand against the US dollar. Where are you here? So we give start giving this an amber light. We're not in it yet. Uh, if we go uh, to a big picture scenario, this is the uh, weekly chart. Here we've got support all the way down here. What I have a tendency to do is just mirror that support okay so that i know what it is on uh multiple time frames and then uh, look at this and remember i said that the us dollar has still got scope to move to the downside so if the us dollar is moving to the downside then new zealand against the us dollar has a tendency to move higher um obviously you need two currencies to dance if you like so 
I'm looking at this 66 uh, 72 this now is being driven by dollar weakness it's not being driven by uh, New Zealand strength because New Zealand has hit a resistance level um, if uh, we hold this level at 66.72 when the dollar basket gets to 88.6 or very close to 88.6 then that offers a decent setup because we've got both of the um, baskets we've got New Zealand dollar and we've got um, US dollar uh, and the most important factor in all our trading and all our analysis is the risk reward factor. So if we get 66.72 and we have a stop placed above the swing high, we're looking at nearly nine to one on a risk reward basis for uh, the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar. OK, guys, I hope that makes sense. Um, please join us uh, in the Telegram group. It's uh, free to join. It's uh, educate to accumulate. Um, if you do like the video, please give me a like. If uh, you want to see more videos uh, like this, then please do subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel. Many thanks. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.